of life. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. St. Paul to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. The Word of the Lord. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. Sing to the Lord, sing praises to him. Tell all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done his miracles, and the judgments he uttered. Remember, let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. O offspring, 
offspring of his servant Abraham, the children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Let hearts rejoice who search for the Lord. sinners. He's saying to them, I need you to change. I need you to change. That's true for everybody. It's true for the Pharisees, and it's true for tax collectors and sinners. Here's the problem with the Pharisees. They don't think they need to change. They really don't. I mean, Paul is hilarious. He lays it out completely in this, this letter to the Philippians. He says, if anyone has reason to be confident, I have 
have more than you. I was circumcised on the eighth day, perfect Jew, a member of the holy people of Israel, a tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. Can you say that? As to the law, I was a Pharisee. I knew more than you. As to zeal, I was a persecutor of the church. No one was a stronger defender of the faith than me. As to righteousness under the law, I was blameless. But then he says, whatever gains I had, they're nothing. They're absolutely nothing. Not when it comes to the freedom that Jesus is offering to us. What's the freedom? It's the same freedom that's offered to Pharisees as it is to tax collectors and sinners, and to prostitutes, and anybody else for that matter that you can think of. It's the same for everybody, everyone. The same offer. Change your heart, put on a new mind. That goes for everybody. There's nobody, nobody who makes it on their own. Nobody, no one. So in that sense, there's no difference between the tax collector and, this, and the Pharisee, none at all. So in that sense, there's no difference between you and that lady who comes around looking for cigarette butts. We're all called to conversion, <coughs> each and every one of us. There's nobody in this place who has, in this place right now, who has more, who's more deserving of a particular seat than anybody else. Nobody. Not even me. <laughs> I say that, not even me. I say especially me. You know what I mean? So it's, there's a subtlety here that we really have to grab onto, because it's easy to condemn the Pharisees. But they are us. But so are the tax collectors and the, and the prostitutes. They are us. We're all very much in the same boat. And until we get that, our salvation is not possible. It's not possible. And so it's, that's how you can see that there are some people who, you know, who do these amazing works and charity and, and things like that. However, I mean, you can't tell this. Only God knows most of the time. Sometimes you can't tell. But people who do these amazing works, but they're doing it so they can be seen. They're doing it so they can be noticed. Well, if that's the case, then all the merit from the act of charity, no matter how huge it was, is lost. All of it. I mean, there's some good that comes out of it. Somebody poor or somebody misfortunate will benefit from it, but the bottom line is the person who does it, they've lost the merit if it's all about who sees me doing it. So we have to be really, really careful, really careful that we don't say, well, you know, you may be an ordinary Catholic or an ordinary Christian, but look at the stuff I'm doing. Look at, I'm involved in Know, food for the poor, I'm involved in this ministry, I'm involved in that thing, I'm doing this and that. I'm clearly, I won't say it out loud, but I'm clearly better than you. That's a Pharisee. That's a Pharisee. And Jesus railed against them. Why? Because he couldn't get through to them. It was easier to get through to the poor. It was easier to get through to the poor than it was to get through to the Pharisees because they were so convinced of their self-righteousness. We have to be very careful. It's a very easy trap to fall into. I think if you want to do something, meditate on St. Paul today. Meditate on this little section from the Philippians. Just take some time today to look at it. Look at all the accomplishments and see if you can't find yourself in your heart of hearts. Although I know you guys, you're all good people. You would never say this out loud. But if you've ever caught yourself saying, well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing fine. Compared to that person, I'm doing great. If you've ever caught yourself doing that, well, because you know how I know? Because I've done that. We've all done that. But that's precisely the attitude that gets us into trouble. We all have to be so careful that we don't fall into that trap. What's the only way to do it? The only way? The only, it's to put yourself in the frame of mind of knowing that the only opinion that should matter to you, the only one that should matter to you is Who's? God, of course. Be right with God. Now here's the really cool thing. God's already right with you. He just needs you to come around. He needs me to come around. He's just waiting. We have these two wonderful parables. There's one more that doesn't get proclaimed today. It's the parable of the prodigal son. Luke gives us these three wonderful parables together. 
We don't hear the prodigal son. We'll hear it at another time. But it's very much in the spirit of these two other parables. We have to be very careful that we're right with God. God is already right with us. He's like the prodigal father, sitting on his tiptoes, waiting for his son to come back. Just waiting, just waiting. But he's on his tiptoes in anticipation. He's waiting for you and me to do the same. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased with us and the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me of all my sin. sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrated in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift since our prayers add nothing to your greatness, but profit us instead for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a 
a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Albert, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, Saint Bernadette of Lourdes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may serve you, that we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for thy divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace, in the form of a bow. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, and by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter through my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
by this sacred gift, O Lord. We give you thanks, and we beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord.